So I do that with each, and then we create locations. I change my workflow now to OBS Manager. As I say, we can create what we call location systems. Uh, so the substructure, the superstructure, the exteriors could all have their own, and the interiors, there's as many as you like. Um, it's always better for scheduling if, if people can share um, as much as possible a common work, workflow around the building. Uh, it helps you to optimize the tasks, um, but you know, we can cater for as many that is required. I'm not going to do it on this just because it's a very simple example. Uh, so if we create the location systems, then uh, we need to create the physical locations. So I've got my project here. We start with a, a complete bounding box, and then I'm going to put that in block plan view. And we've got some tools in here. We can snap to certain areas, so I'll snap to the center and break it that way. And, and I will get another way as well. I'll do something maybe a little bit more decorative, just so you can see when we have the quantities in the schedule. So once we've done it, these are the locations we're going to have. Then we just need to refresh the quantities, recalculate them uh, per location. And now if I open the tree, these are, these are ones that are grayed out. Um, they were just the other side of the line which I cut. It knows there's nothing there, so just tidy those up. And then you can see each of the locations, and I can isolate them. And these will be, uh, now we have the quantities of everything that's required in those locations, which will draw the schedule. I'll just give them a bit of a naming structure. So once you've created your location tree, uh, then we're ready to actually start planning. And uh, this is our, our control software. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with um, Flowland, this is a different way of representing the information that you would see in Gantt. Um, so we have the locations that we've created. Uh, you can see the A, B, C, D down here on the left hand side. We have the timeline across the top. And because this information has um, come from the actual estimate and the locations that we've uh, set up, these lines are based on the quantities in the schedule. Okay. Um, each of the tasks are starting today, they're all starting at the same, uh, the same time in the same place, which you know isn't going to work. So I need to add logic. Um, just for those that aren't familiar, here are the same tasks represented in Gantt. Um, again, there's no logic. Uh, so first, I'm going to go to the resource registry. And the scheduler could use his own um, resource data and crews and inputs or we can say, I want to use the ones that are actually in the estimate as a starting point, and we can update this. That brings in the, uh, the ones that I've just created, and then we can add some logic. So whereas in a, a normal Gantt schedule, um, your logic, you have to create for every single location or copy and paste it from location to location. The way this works is slightly differently, and that uh, if I just say that Form work always goes before the rebar, before the concrete for these partic this particular element. Wherever that was found in the uh, building, it would automatically add that logic. Okay, so you can see the logic is now added in here. And if I go to the flow line, uh, so something that you can't really see is the um, how good or bad that schedule is in here especially when you've got a huge schedule with lots of different uh, sheets and pages. Uh, it's not that easy to track. In the flow line view, uh, I can see that the productivity of um, this task and all these tasks are all completely different. So we try to balance it as much as possible. And if we do that, instead of just sliding a line from left to right, and just, it just lets us do it, 
you know, and typically people will say that'll take about two weeks, that'll take about two weeks. There's some logic involved. Um, so we would normally set up the size of crew uh, in here. If I open the tasks, um, here we would say, okay, there's, I don't know, there's three people in that crew, and then this would be the number of crews. So if I change that, uh, you can set the line changes as well. So it's now dividing the number of hours in the estimate into the people in the crew. And I still want to balance them more than that. So if I try to uh, put them on a similar project, it'll now tell me that, OK, I now would need three crews to achieve what I've just uh, tried to do. And it'll say, do you want to do that by adding three crews? Or can you change the production factor or consumption? I don't know. Maybe you can. Maybe you've got a big width. Um, but I'm going to add some more crews here. Um, so it gives you that chance to, you know, can I actually get three crews next week or next month? Can I get them all here at the same time? Uh, so it forces you to um, re really consider what you can and cannot do instead of just sliding a bar. Um, 